Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to do part two of our introduction to the basic scales. Today we're going to have a look at the folded scales and the inverted scales, and why you would use them and when. So without further ado, let's go right to the virtual N3 slide rule. Okay, in the last episode, we went ahead and looked at a difficult problem to solve on the CD scale, which is the main scale of the slide rule. What we did was we decided that we were going to go and multiply 4 by 6. Now, we realized that we couldn't go here because that would bring, that would bring the 6 way out there. And we solved it initially by coming over and using the other index and then coming right down here to 6 and getting our answer of 24. Well, there's another way that we can do it. Let's come back out here to 4. Now, if you flip the slide rule over with this button right here, notice that we're still on 4, but now we have some new scales. We have the DF scale and the CF scale. These are called the folded scales. And the easiest way to imagine what these are is if you were to look at the index on, say, the C folded scale right here, notice it's in the middle. If we bring this over to line up here, notice that these twos line up, as do the three and pi. Well, what about these guys over here? Well, they're actually down there. So if we bring that same index and line it up with the other one, with the right index, Notice once again, here's the 5, there's the 5. Here's the 8, there's the 8. These all line up now. So if we go to 4 and we put the index on the CF scale under the hairline, we can just come right over here to 6 and then come down to D and read our answer again. Once again, it's 24. Now if we want to divide that by 2, we just put the 2 directly under our answer and then we come down to the index and read straight down, and here's our answer, 12. Remember, this is 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Same place we started, right down here on the D scale. Now, if we want to multiply this by 4, notice that we don't have a 4 out here. The 4 on the folded scale will be over here, so we want to go back to our C scale, put the index over it, and then come straight out to 4, and we have 48. The point that I'm making here is that when you see an index on either the, the C and the D scale or the folded C or the folded D scale, they can be used interchangeably because the C and the D and the folded C and D are related to each other and they're to the same scale, so they can be used interchangeably. Now, a different scale is the CI scale right here. That stands for the C inverted scale. And when you see a number here, for example, this four in red, that doesn't mean four. That's actually one over four because all of these are one over the number that is listed. If we start off here at one and then come out to the four on the CI scale, what we're doing is we're multiplying it by one over four. And the answer, of course, Notice it's 2.5, but 2.5 what? That's 0.25, so it's 2.5 times 10 to the negative 1. Now, why would you use this? Let's use our example of 4 times 6 again. So we'll come out here to the 4. Now we go to the inverted scale, and we put the 6 on the inverted scale over it as if we are dividing by 6, except what we're doing is we're dividing by 1 over 6, and that is the same thing as multiplying it by 6. And you see the answer, of course, is 24. Now, once again, if we multiply by a number on the CI scale, it's the same as multiplying it by 1 over that number. So if we come out here to where the 8 is, notice our answer is 3. That's because we're multiplying 24 by 1 over 8, which, of course, is the same thing as dividing it by 8. So once again, the key to understanding the scales is realizing which scales are related to each other and how they're related. So the C and the D scale and the CF and the DF scale are related to each other. The difference being is the index for the C and D scale is at the extreme left or the extreme right, whereas for the folded scale, the index is in the middle. So a good example of when you would choose a CF or a DF scale or even the inverted scale, the CI scale, or the, even the inverted CIF scale. 
Okay, so say you're out here at pi and you want to divide the number by 9 and then multiply it by 1.5. It's awkward to have to divide it by 9, go to the index, and then come all the way over here again, put another index on it, and then come out to 1.5. What if instead we use the folded scale? So we'll divide it by 9 on the folded scale right here, and then we'll immediately divide, uh, multiply it by 1.5, which will be out here. And then if we want to multiply that answer by 2, all we have to do is just come right here to the 2 on the inverted scale and divide it by that number. That's dividing it by 1 half. And then our answer is right out here. Those are how the folded and inverted scales work. Now when we start doing complex practice problems where we're multiplying a number by another number and then dividing it by a third, you'll see where these scales come in handy. Basically, you don't have to memorize combinations to figure out which scale you're going to use. Simply use the one that is most convenient at the moment. That may be the CD scale. It may be the folded C and D scales, or it may be an inverted scale. As we progress along, we'll start to develop a feel for this. So this is Bob the Science Guy. I hope that that helped you out a little bit. If it did, give me a follow-up, because there's more to come. Take care, guys.